Hello my dears, this is Sarah from SheHoldsDearly.com and today we're going to be taking a look at some things I found at the thrift store. This is part of our Styling Thrifted Decorations series, but I'm going to focus on gifts. So we're going to look at a bunch of Christmas gift ideas that you can find while you're out thrifting. Now, not all of this came from the thrift store, but I want to kind of expand your mind as to the places that you can keep your eyes open for gift ideas when you're out and about. So this first item is a really delicious Christmas tea. Now, this is actually at a discounted grocery store, and I always just kind of have my eyes open for what's in at the time. I have a couple things from that store, and the first one is this Christmas tea. These were a hand-me-down from my mother-in-law, and I'm going to turn these into a gift for my little niece. I found these crocheted, well, I think they're doilies, but I love these for dishcloths because they have just a, the right an amount of texture to have a little bit of abrasion, and they're just really pretty. So I grabbed these and I use these like dishcloths. These were $3 for the two of those. Got an idea for that. I found a couple candles, always, look over the candle selection. Um, this is an heirloom tomato soy candle and my father-in-law likes to grow tomatoes and he can't now because of his health and he loves antiques so I actually think this could work for him. The tomato candle is was five dollars at the thrift store. All right this is just a random little taper candlestick. I loved how it was swirled. One dollar. Okay continuing on. I got this at the Dollar Tree. They're little, I think they're styrofoam covered in faux moss. And this is a carpet sample that was cut into a pond shape. I'm going to take my lead from these and put together a really cute gift idea for my nieces and nephews. Always check the Christmas decorations. You never know what you're gonna find. I got this little snowman. It's actually gonna go on the outside of the wrapping for my 10 year old niece. She used to sit in the back of my car when she was really tiny and sing the Frozen songs and totally screw them up and they were so cute. So this just makes me think of her. So when you find little things, it doesn't necessarily have to be a gift, but you can think about, oh, how could I incorporate this into the wrapping? That's what this is for. I have a beautiful garden journal, brand new, $20 retail. I paid a dollar for this at a garage sale. I have a Pier 1 frame that was originally $12. I paid $5 for this at Goodwill. And then I guess this is a little stationary set. I paid $3 for this. It has cute little stickers on the back. I paid I can't remember if it was one or two dollars at a garage sale for this cute little hat. Now these are not like a great price. They're eight dollars each, but I got these at an antique store recently and they're beautiful can labels. So this one was for corn. This one was for tomatoes. But this would go with that tomato candle. Okay, back to that discounted grocery store. Two dollars for this 10 of European style cookies. Found this darling little rolling pen for $3. And last of all, I found this in the free box this summer. It's a huge roll of plaid wrapping paper. I love plaid. If you like the colors and you find it in a plaid, it's pretty much a shoe in. It's gonna look really good when all the packages are all wrapped up. So got this for free. And I like to have some big rolls of nice wrapping paper just on hand because my kids start wrapping things and they just need a ton of it and I really like everything to look coordinated under the tree if I can possibly get away with that. So handing them some things like this helps kind of keep the look consistent. And now I'm gonna get to work thinking about who needs what and what needs to be upcycled a little bit 
and I will be back after I show you some quick little DIYs, show you it all done and talk about how I put it all together. Now, one thing I should have said in the beginning is that I find thrifting for gifts to be tricky for men. Well, I have trouble buying for men anyway. So I usually let my husband handle all that. And I also think it can be hard for like your, your extremely immediate family who has specific things on their list. I mean, you know how it is. Thrifting is just a, just a treasure hunt. You never know what you're gonna find. But for everybody like right outside of your house, so the neighbors and the teachers and the friends and the cousins and even your parents, things like that, I feel like there's a little bit more freedom in what you can give them. So those are usually the people that I get taken care of really pretty easily out thrifting or just having my eyes open all year round as I'm in different discounted stores and thrift stores. So the first thing I wanna do is add a pom-pom to this little hat that I got at a garage sale. This is for my niece who looks very cute in her hat. And I had this extra pom-pom. I made it just as a prototype last year when I made my pom-pom garland. All right, so that took me just a minute. That wasn't too bad. Now I wanna make these Jingle Bells into a wreath. And I thought she could, you know, play with it, shake it. She's just turned one. So let's get going on that. I have this 18 gauge dark green floral wire. I'll link it for you. All right, so I'm gonna take two of these because I feel like it might be too heavy in the end, so I'm gonna double up. I'm gonna take my needle nose pliers and bend them around until I get a loop. You can even bend it up to make it even more secure for her holding the bells. And I'm just gonna thread these on. And they will just naturally clump together. You don't have to work too hard at that. All right, so this used about 24 bells. And these are big, bigger bells, as you can see. And then I'm just gonna come around here and go thread through my loop that I made. All right, so I got to the very end. I put my last bell on and left like an inch of wire and then threaded through that initial loop that I made and wrapped it around as best as I could. You wanna get, of course, the tips um, hidden as well as possible. And then I have a ribbon to add on and I'm gonna wrap it around wire ends to protect a little bit. So my next gift is for my good friend. I'm gonna give her this garden journal. She's a wonderful gardener and she has the cutest house and I really wanna do a home tour for you of her house. When you group gifts together, which is a great way to make something look more valuable, you wanna match your colors and they kind of need to be sort of, you know, like in the same genre. So I have basically a home and garden gift, right? So artwork and then her garden journal. Normally I would put the larger gift underneath, but it's so cute. I am gonna put it on top and just keep it straight. And then I always borrow her brass candlesticks for thing, candlestick um, holders. And so <laughs> I was gonna give her this cute little taper candle. Okay, and then I had this little faux flower that I'm gonna add in. Now the trick with using baker's twine is you wanna wrap it, uh, I would say at least four times, and really kind of stretch it out, space it around. Kind of has a boho feel to it. Okay, the next gift is gonna be for my father-in-law who is a gardener who hasn't been able to garden because of his health. He used to grow fantastic tomatoes, so I'm gonna give him this other soup label, ladle, soup label, and he also loves antiques. So we have this. I really wanna take this out of here. I, I feel like this looks dated, although wrapped looks more new. So let's just see what it looks like without the raffia. Oh, it smells like heirloom tomatoes. I think it's fine. I mean, it's clearly a new candle, right? All right, I found these beautiful mugs when I was in Snohomish, and I'm gonna put these together with 
my Christmas tea for a gift for my sister-in-law and brother-in-law. And then I'll just tuck this all into a box with the European chocolate cookies. So see how when I'm grouping things, I think about a theme, and again, I, I try to keep my colors really consistent. For this cute rolling pin, I thought it'd be perfect for a child, maybe like three, well no, no, maybe two, two or three years and up. I am gonna link a recipe for gingerbread scented Play-Doh. It's a homemade Play-Doh. Uh, one year I gave that to my nieces and nephews with cookie cutters, like vintage cookie cutters, but this would work for it too. The next gift I want to put together is what our family calls the Habitat Box. And my friend simply used a little clear bin and she added things that she got from the Dollar Tree and from the floral section at places so that the kids could play with their little plastic animals and create different types of habitats. And it was a slam dunk of a gift. So we got some moss rocks, and this is all from the Dollar Tree. I went to Joann's and I found some little wood rounds. Their holiday picks are heavily discounted right now. I had that extra little Christmas tree. And then you can do things like cut up carpet scraps uh, to make it look like a pond or like a desert or something. And, and they, can use, they can line them with the rocks and set up trees around there and then put their little animals in there. I don't know if they have plastic animals. This is for my, my two nieces and my nephew. And so, I just bought an inexpensive set at Joann's. I think these are $10. They have a whole bunch of different types of, of sets of animals. Um, the brand is Wild Republic. So the next gift is for my niece who is 10. So she loves her cousins. So I thought that this little stationery set would be fun. The patterns make me think of Miss Mustard Seed. I'm just gonna tie this up. Her name is Scarlet. I'm gonna tie it up with a red ribbon. Okay, and then I got this little frame, Pier 1 frame. And I printed this picture of my niece with my daughter at my daughter's graduation party. All right, my last gift is going to be for my sister-in-law. She has a new house that she's trying to get set up all cute. So I thought I would give her these as her dish cloths and Mrs. Myers is my favorite. I got the geranium scent for my sister-in-law. And this is an all-purpose cleaner. This is what I use. I use the lavender one in my house, but you just use a teaspoon in a whole bottle of water and this thing will last for a few years, potentially. I forgot to show you this in the initial recording but I found these. I always love to look for a little cards and gift tags and wrapping paper and things when I am at garage sales. This was 25 cents for these little wreaths and I thought that they would work nicely to make gift tags with. So I have these and I especially love to use hot glue when I am putting tags on or little decorations or a flower or something when I'm wrapping gifts and that's the fastest most effective way to get everything to come together real beautifully and securely. So I'm gonna hot glue a little wreath on each tag and then we are done with our presents for now.
Alright, so there you have it. There's some ideas for thrifting or discounted food stores, things that you might even have around the house that you can like incorporate in to make something look like a really nice gift. And then you wrap it well, and ta-da, you are done. I hope you got some good inspiration and confidence about gift giving on a budget. All right, if you're new here, please consider hitting that subscribe button so I can send you more videos on how to make interior design easy and a few extra things thrown in like gift giving once in a while. All right, take care. I'll talk to you soon.